I'm not a morning person. Dedicated to being passionate about it. Bodybuilders have become more lazy. People have always thought I lift fake weights. Iran and the United States. You take, you take responsibility for that. So I wanted to get, I wanted to get uh, how you got you started in the fitness and why you chose men's physique and sort of like how you got into the bodybuilding in the first place. Um, you know, uh, I got into just lifting weights and training in general when I was incarcerated. Um, I was uh, a senior in college and uh, my last year I got arrested for, um, you know, for uh, dealing, dealing drugs, cocaine to be specific. And, uh, my first, that was my first conviction, man, and I got four to eight year sentence. So yeah, I went from <laughs> a senior in college to straight doing hard time. <laughs> so you know, with, I had nothing but time on my hand, and that's where like fitness came about. That's where it all started, right there. Wow, that's 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 amazing. I, I had no idea about that. Yeah, a lot of people did it. I I, I let it be known like, you know, after the Olympia and stuff, but uh. With the coat, yeah, this this year was kind of you know it was kind of hectic. Everybody, so much was going on and stuff. So uh, it, it kind of like got in the way of me getting everything out there as Mr. Olympia, you know, getting the message, even giving my testimony of how I, you know, went through my troubles and stuff. So I've definitely been, you know, currently picking it up and getting it out there more and more. So it was a good time. So, so how many years have you served? So two thousand and I actually got out early. On an early release is my first because it was my first time, so it was a program. So I got out in three years instead of four. But like granted, like I said, I went from you know college to student to doing you know state prison time. Um, in those three years, that's when I started training. You know, it, it started as like a survival thing. You know, every day it started at, actually it started as something really just like yeah past time. <laughs> I was little man, I was skinny. People think I was big my whole life, but. I was, I was 145 pounds when I graduated high school. <laughs> this height still. <laughs> so when I, went in, when I went inside and I was incarcerated in prison, uh, I was about maybe 165 pounds, bro. <laughs> so, you know, going in there, you, you, know, you, you outside you take movies and stuff like, oh, I got to get some muscle on me. <laughs> so I just started lifting weights, you know, just like that. <laughs> what a perfect time, you know. And, uh. Every day, I just, every day, just got, you know, I just, it, it, it gave me strength. It gave me hope, you know, especially in that atmosphere, you know, where hope is small, bro. Like, it's, it's non-existent in there, you know, it's, you know, inside prison, it's, it's rehabilitation, but it, it's all about how you apply yourself, you know, just like out here. So, so I knew in there that one day I would get out. So I was coming back better than ever, you know? <laughs> And you yeah. served in, uh, did you serve in Pennsylvania State? Where did yeah. Yep. In, in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So how was the, a lot of people working out there? Was it, was it, was it common to work out over there? Oh, yeah. You definitely get motivation to work out, too. That's where it all starts. <laughs> you know, you're going, I mean, you're going out there no matter what the weather is, too. <laughs> yeah, there's even exercises that you got to complete. Or if not, there's a puddle underneath you that you're going to fall in. <laughs> we call it the yard out workout, the pull-ups, push-ups, and dips. So, like, that's huge. That's, I still do those. So it's like a, a staple every day. And what, were you, um, what about eating? Like, what, what was you eating over there as far as, like? <laughs> Dude. Yo, it, yo it's, it's so crazy because the parallel, like, how parallel, I guess, the, the lifestyle there was to how, like, with bodybuilding. It's kind of like you get used to certain things you can eat. So the discipline, I guess, in a sense, is where I picked up, you know, inside. Because I was, you know, I, I couldn't order McDonald's, get, go grab McDonald's and stuff. You know, I'm eating whatever the hell is down in the chow hall or whatever we can make on the block with the guys with uh, soups and <laughs> bags of chips and <laughs> oodles of noodles, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, you, know, you know, it's so funny. I used to get these universal packs, these protein packs that used to come. They were universal powder <laughs> protein packs. Had no idea what I was doing with them, but, you know, just trying to get big and get extra meals in and stuff. You got a commissary? You got a commissary going? Yeah, there you go, commissary, yeah. That's nice. So you were, oh, you're actually taking protein. That's, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's expensive, though, but big ups to my support system, man. Same guys I'm with right now, you know, with the yams, with the movement, and my family and stuff, man, like, that's, that was huge right there. That, that helped me a lot getting through. So you went in, you were 165, and you got out, you were what? 
<sighs> probably then still only like 195, 190, you know, but because I'm hard, it was hard to gain weight still, especially especially knowing what I know now and being inside because you're just eating anything, bro. Like the quality, you're getting carbs like crazy, sugary. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, your meal in the morning will be cereal, toast, uh, 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 <laughs> a cake. <laughs> you see what I just said? Sugar, carbs, all the way across the board. So, you know, you 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 still, like I said, I that was when I uh, I got into it all though training, and still didn't know anything about like the nutrition part. I'm just winging it. Like I said, I just was doing it every day, making the days go faster. Mm-hmm. So when you got out, what happened next? What, what, how did, what did you, what did you do next after? So I got out and, uh, you know, there was, I was still limited on what I could do because, you know, I was still in a halfway house. And so I was, uh, just had little windows on, you know, being able to get reintroduced into society. That, you know, so I had to like, I had about four hours a day that I would get to either go job search, which I was supposed to do, but I was actually going to the gym too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go look for some jobs, but before I go back in, I'm like, man, I like, you know, I like, I still like lifting weights. And it's one thing I kept in my head. I just never stopped. So, you know, I, I kept lifting like that. And, um, you know, as I got through the system of the halfway house and everything, I just, I still lifted weights. I never stopped going to the gym. And uh, one day. You like the feeling of going, you're being in the gym. You actually like the, that experience? Yeah, I actually like, you know. I actually liked it because every you know, every day it just became a part of my lifestyle. I just didn't even know it that it was a bodybuilding world lifestyle also. <laughs> so um, one day I'm in LA Fitness, you know, just hitting the uh, preacher curls, and a guy comes over to me and he's like, "Yo, dude, do you do you compete?" I'm thinking like compete. I'm like I'm thinking like power, like powerlifting or something. He's like bodybuilding. I'm like hell no. I'm like all well, this. Day. Dudes in the underwear and stuff. <laughs> this was before I did any. I had any knowledge on men's physique, so you know I'm thinking like, what? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Ronnie Coleman and those dudes? I'm like, like, I, I, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm still only about 190. I know I'm still. You know, you look at yourself and you still don't think you're big enough. And I'm like, I know I'm not gonna look good upstate on stage doing that stuff. Uh, but no, right away he knew, like, you know, I was like, no, hell no. And he was like, no, men's physique. There's this new division, men's physique, you should try to get into. And this was 2000 and this was, this was, this was years after, you know, a few years after my incarceration, about 2014, you know, like, so from 2011, so I got incarcerated 2008, 2011, and I still, you know, trained, so still lifted weights, but still nothing like the bodybuilding world, just going to the gym, you know. Eating chicken wings, that's my protein and stuff. <laughs> protein shakes and stuff. But uh, 2014, fast forward a little bit, that's when you know, I met the guy at the gym and we talked about, you know, he asked me about competing and an immense physique. And I'm like, I, 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 you know, this was, man, I wasn't even big on social media or anything yet. I wasn't, uh, this was all new to me. And uh, I get on there and I'm looking at these dudes. I'm like, okay, this is way, way better than. And I imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shorts. The boar shorts. I'm like, word, word. <laughs> so the boar shorts, that got me right there. I'm like, all right, I can see myself doing this, you know. Uh, big ups, like, yeah, I was watching like dudes like Tori Woodward, uh, Johnny Sebastian, all those guys before us. Um, man, even like Sadiq and Jeremy and all those guys. So, you know, be they was doing it before us. So, I instantly got on there and I checked them out. I'm like, all right, I, I, I can, I can do this. I could try this. <laughs> so I hired a coach, a local coach, and I did my show. That was July when I had the conversation. I did my show in October, and I did my first show then, and we won overall in Pennsylvania. It was a Pennsylvania you won overall. Wow, first, first one. Yeah, it was a small one though. It was a small one. It, it was, yeah. It, it still, it was a, it was only about like. <laughs> maybe like five of us or something like that so it wasn't a big show at all um but still I, I you know i had my coach and even the feedback there you know still like yo keep going with it I, I did another show i did my second show i decided to do it two days or three days before it like happened <laughs> like that's just how new this world was to me you know <laughs> so this coach told you how to like 
do the prep, how to like yeah. cut water and all that stuff, right? Like he yep. took you through the process. So the second show was pretty soon after. And I'm like, yeah, well, we should do the show. Like, you know, I'm still in shape. We did that. And I did, I won a class, but didn't win overall. So that's when I like, I really got uh, the guy, and then the guy, and I didn't deserve it. The guy looked good. And that's when I was like, okay, it was way different from my first show and my second show. So that's, and you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an athlete by you know just by nature. Younger, I played at all the sports growing up, so I it got me hooked. That one right there, I'm like, damn, I didn't win. <laughs> but I'm like, yo, these dudes look good. Like, yo, that, I, that's when I was like, okay, there's a lot of work to be done. And you know, like they say, your first time you step on stage, I, it's like you know if it's for you right away. And it, it, I knew it was right away. So how did you feel about preparing for the competition, being competitive, hitting the poses, and all that? Like, did you enjoy that? It was it was it was weird. <laughs> it was weird, man. Like, like it's just it's a whole. It was a whole different world, you know. So, um, not necessarily discipline on the eating, um, but just you know the, the the posing, obviously the training. That was the that got me hooked though because you know you're you're watching yourself, you see the the process, your body change. Now I'm like that really got me hooked in the entire process. Cause I was just used to, like I said, just lifting weights, just getting it in, and the genetics carried me and stuff. But not really knowing what I was doing until I got into the bodybuilding stuff. So, you know, it's funny you mentioned you um, when they brought up the whole bodybuilding thing, right? You mentioned the, the posing trunks, and you were like, kind of laughing yeah. at that, right? There's no way. Yeah. How do you feel about people like, especially the older guys, making fun of the the board shorts, saying that's not real bodybuilding? You guys covering up, and you know, I'm sure you heard that so many times, man. Yeah. So when you of hear course. that aspect of it, like, how, how do you feel about that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I understand where it comes from. It comes from a lot of different things. Um, shoot, a lot of it's like, I, well, let's just be real, envy and jealousy, because like, man, and, and I get it because, dude, a lot of like bodybuilding, just, like, certain things are just certain ways for people, right? And the minute you try to change it, they're like, that <laughs> don't count, bro. I'm like, no, hell no. <laughs> and, and then when you see the guys like making, like, you know, those guys in men's physique making good living and stuff off of things that I guess the bodybuilders, you know, in, in their times up to men's physique uh, origin, it really wasn't available. You know what I mean? So you look at it, it's like, yo, these guys just get in here and it's, you ain't earn shit. Is a real bodybuilding that's showing legs. So, I mean, it's easy to start throwing different things on it. Um, but then a lot of things, you know, it comes from, like I said, it just change. People, you know, people don't, it doesn't matter. They, we could do, we get it in. You know, look at look at our physiques. Look at these, look at our guys. It's not just dudes that are showing up, doing half training and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. I think that, I think that's died down though a lot though over the, over the past couple of years, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, some people, uh, a lot of guys from the men's physique division, they tend to go and just defend it, you know, vigorously. You know what I'm saying? Like, on social yeah. Media, um, I, yo, I get it. You <laughs> you defend it, or you just kind of ignore the, the criticism? Uh, I don't really pay attention. I don't really give too much negative stuff my my energy. You know what I mean? And like, bro, I'm thankful as hell for men's physique. I don't give a fuck what people say. <laughs> you heard my story, bro. So I'm thankful for it. That's just what it is. So. Uh, Man, you know, not every hey, whatever floats your boat, not everything's for you. But man, you ask me, I love it. It's hot, it's rocking, it ain't going nowhere. It's only gonna keep getting better. It's added so much value to you know the industry, the 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 bodybuilding world. So, you know, I think I think in the earlier years, the there was a lot of stigmatism, a lot of like, I guess not satisfaction towards the division. But man, I've I've interacted with a lot of these dudes, man, open bodybuilders, Mr. Olympias, and I get respect from them. So I think it's just different. I think it's the different individuals, you know? Like, I, I really think that is also. Because game real recognize real, man. I don't care if you're an amateur, Mr. Olympia, pro. Dude, you could tell. You you see people getting it in, and you got to respect it if you're doing the same stuff. That's how I look at it, you know? You can't knock somebody that's doing it if you if you really know what it takes to get there. So. Definitely. So how did you finally get your pro card? What year was it? And do you remember the show and like how did you actually got it? So I started in 2014 in uh, October. It took me 
a little, was it 12 months? I got it the following November. I, I won the overall in Miami in Nationals. So yeah, I won my first show, won the overall, but I didn't win another show <laughs> at all until I won my overall. Like, and I was competing, and it wasn't like I was winning. I, I, I won overall. I didn't win the next one. And the next one, I got, like, third place in my class. And then, like, the next one, maybe third place in my class again. And uh, I was qualified for North Americans, which was here in Pittsburgh. And uh, I'm like, man, I'm going to give it a try. You know, it's here. I want to see what I'm really made out of. Let's, let's give it a shot. Um, North Americans. I came in fifth in my class. So I'm like, okay, it's national show, first national show. You know, that's that's pretty decent still. But, uh, yeah, a lot of – it was huge, bro. And, and then, yeah, I think I went from five in my first show to a little bit more in the next to more in the next to, like, North Americans. There was about 30 of us on stage. I'm like, whoa. You know, I'm, I, but I'm so – man, my coach now, Omar Ventura, <laughs> he has the footage from when they called me in the call-outs. <laughs> I ran out to it. I was so shocked, you know? Uh, so I get fifth in my class. And, um, um, I, you know, I, from there, I, you know, I, I was kind of, I was happy. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, this is, I could probably turn pro for real now. And I was going to take some time off. And this was October, that was, that was September 2015. I was going to take some time off, you know, get bigger, come back maybe next spring or something. I end up going to the Olympia to work with Isolator Fitness. <laughs> I end up, I, the girl I was with at the time, I ended up like not going to a wedding with her to go to this Olympia. <laughs> not with her no more, but <laughs> but it was worth it. Thank God I went to that Olympia, bro. <laughs> so Pete, get to that. She, uh, uh, I get to the Olympia and uh, I'm talking, you know, I, like I had the, I wasn't going to compete at nationals coming up which was the next national show. And uh, everyone I talked to, they're like, man, you got to. You came in first call out to national level show. You got to. And I'm like, I guess I got to, especially after watching the Olympia show for the first time in person. Oh, man. I'm pre I'm hyped. We're doing it. I went from not doing it to like, now we're doing it. Um, so we prepped about six weeks for it. Still in shape. And get down to Miami and we win the overall men's physique national championship just after placing fifth in my class two months prior. And I wasn't even going to do the show. So I said, thank goodness I didn't go to that wedding. I went to the Olympia. <laughs> That's crazy. You discover bodybuilding. You start doing your first show in 2014, 15, you're a pro. 2019, you missed your Olympia. That's crazy. Yeah. Think about the timeline. Yeah, it's quite a timeline. Quite a time. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible timeline. You came out of you came out of prison, discovered mm -hmm. bodybuilding, fitness, men's physique, became a pro a year later, and then Mr. Olympia. It's nuts. It's wild. It is. And so, so how was it winning the Olympia, man? I mean, that was last year, and hey, that was fell away from the, from the from the champion. You know what I mean? Like, how did it feel at the moment? Dude, I mean, you know, I just got into the story of everything. You know, so. To achieve that, man, it was just like, oh, it was every emotion you could, you know, you could really feel. But it, it just, it just gave me more confidence moving, moving forward, you know, like, because, dude, I got, I mean, I don't look for sympathy at all, but I got, you know, it a cloud over my head where, you know, that thing comes up in opportunities or that has prevented me from things, you know? So, like, to really get that shit done and win the Olympia with all that, Attach me like there's like like dark sport man you never fucking give up bro like that's real you know like it, it sounds so cliche but nah <laughs> like not to sound so cliche but dude I could have easily been you know back into the system I could have easily been you know not here right here you know unheard of and this 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 industry I wouldn't even been even you know aware of so you know like things like that come into the thought and stuff and you know just. And like I said, it just motivated me to just keep going with it, you know, like just keep going with it. I knew, you know, that I, I, that, that, I knew this was my purpose, you know, because you know, I just make so much adjustments to my life for it, you know. And then when you, when you actually like accomplish, you know, the top of the top, whew, 
Yeah, it was icing on the cake right there. <laughs> um, is it easy to maintain the lifestyle of being a men's physique competitor, right? Uh, compete, you know, win the titles, but at the same time have a lifestyle that you can actually support. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sure now it's much easier, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like climbing up the ranks, you know what I mean? Like, right. Is it, cause even the local competitions, after you become a pro, still the, the funds is not as on the same level as the men's open, for example. Right. So like, mm -hmm. is, is it difficult? Was it difficult for you to maintain yourself? Um, no, at the time I, uh, I, uh, I was owning actually a commercial cleaning business. So I kind of, you know, I came into this at a point where I wasn't like a, a, a kid, you know what I mean? Like I kind of had, you know, finances and stuff in order, but it, it, it got the, the problem I ran into was the schedule of the time. You know, you really got to put time into it. Um, but yeah, hell yeah. The finances for sure. If you weren't in a situation like I was, it adds up, dude. You know, it, it's a lifestyle. It's a hobby at first. <laughs> so you got, you, you know, every day you, you might be looking at you like, damn, I gotta buy groceries again. <laughs> dude, I, I swear, I tell you, my two biggest expenses, clothing and food. Thank God I have sponsors for them. <laughs> but know how much I eat. And, you know, I like, how, I like the dress. So, yeah, man, when you climb in those ranks, it definitely, it, it gets rough. You know, it gets rough, but. It's just like anything you love, man. When you love doing it, you find ways of doing it. You know, like you, you find ways of. To... It's definitely smart as a as a men's physique competitor, right? If you give somebody <laughs> advice to get a job, basically, right? Even when you're a pro, get a job or some kind of a business. Oh, bro, you can't be broke out here doing. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Back. Um. Oh. My shit, man, no matter what you're doing, you can't be out here being broke, period, man. So, <laughs> like, you know, so, I mean, that's my mindset, no matter what I'm doing. I mean, and so, kind of adds up. It's it's a no-brainer. You got to find some ways to support it, you know, before you could, you got to find some way to support it before it supports, until it supports you. That's just, that's just how it is. Um, and, you know, like, you know, a lot of guys, they might see it as, you know, where we are now and how we got, you know, all the support. But, man, hell no. You got to grind, bro. Just how it was with you before you got here, you know. You, 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 you know, you can relate, man. It takes a lot of a lot of pride swallowing and a lot of sacrifices, bro. But if you want it, man, you just got to find ways to do it. So, yeah, whether it be a job, whether – however you got you to gotta find ways. If this is what you want to do, it's going to require, you know, some effort financially and – a, a bunch of other ways for sure for sure uh let's talk about 2020 olympia man let's talk about going into into this year you're the champion right talk about mm -hmm. the mindset of, of obviously 2020 has been a crazy year right so talk about your prep um and going into olympia what were you trying to do something different what was your strategy um uh, there was there, we um there wasn't really no different strategy you know we was we brought it bro uh the prep was actually this year, even though it was pretty up and down, it was pretty crazy at roller coaster, you know, just like everyone. Um, man, it goes back to my guys around me, man. We we it was a good prep, bro. It was it was it was fun, you know, it was it was the highlight of the year for us, you know, going the, the prep and going to Olympia because everything else was canceled. We've been in the crib all day all year, you know, and not being able to travel. So we put a lot of, you know, everything we did into this prep and it, it was, it was, we, you know, my, um, we brought it, bro. We, we, every day, you know, and she was going into the Olympia. We, I was confident, man. Confident as heck. I really didn't feel too much pressure going into it, neither, because, like, my thing was, you know, you had to beat me. It was, a, I feel like there was a lot more on your shoulders when you are climbing that hill, like you said, because it, who knows what you went through to get there, <laughs> you know? And I kind of was in a position, you know, you know, after the Olympia, you know, despite the, you know, the COVID and everything else, I had good people around me to where, you know, prep was awesome, man. And we improved and we didn't get the results that we wanted, you know. I, I was talking to Brandon, right? He said it was, he said it was a tough battle, he told me. And mm -hmm. oh. Steve Weinberger, you know, the head judge, he said that he thought you were actually winning the first, uh, in a pre-judging, right? Mm -hmm. So did you feel like you were winning in pre-judging also? Hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's just no doubt. I st like, yeah, he won, but man. <sighs> Here's my thing, bro. Like, you know, any, any, like boxing, anything, oops, you ain't coming there and just edging the champ out. You know what I mean? And like, I showed up. So like, 
you know, I, I just, now I went back to, you know, I went back to everything and it's, you know, I keep it real with myself, bro. Like, and, 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 and he definitely looked good. He definitely looked good. Not to take nothing away from him to judge him or anything. And it's just like, you know, I, I feel like I was reaching when I'm trying to like, ah, oh, I could have been better here. I could have been better here. But at the end of the day, bro, it's like, that's a, a former Mr. Olympia. Brandon ain't no slouch, you know, like, <laughs> so it's like, we dealing again, we ain't dealing with buckets and touchdowns or, or goals and shit. So it's like, ah, <laughs> you know, it, it was tough. It's like, you know, I definitely I said, I thought I had it. You know, I definitely felt confident, you know, um, shit, unfortunately not. You know, I, I, we didn't even, I didn't, I didn't, they didn't even judge us at finals the way that they did at prejudging. So, I don't know. I, I, I feel, I don't know. It was kind of, I would, you know, I thought we was going to get it back on at finals for real, especially how we did it at prejudging and it was just us two. But man, it was, <laughs> you already know, man. <laughs> Probably when he announced his name. Was a oh, yo, someone, I was reading one of the, comp, the uh, one of the posts and it was like, he said it was kind of, they were, people were wondering if, they were wondering the awkward moment, what happened, you know, initially. You know, people were trying to blow it up. Oh, Raymond didn't shake his hand. Brandon, like, but if you go back and look at it, <laughs> the perfect word. Someone's like, Raymond was perplexed. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? though? like, and Brandon was shocked. But someone else was trying to make it seem like, you know, I didn't want to shake his hand or something. I'm like, shit, that was the last thing I was thinking about. I was like, whoa, shit. <laughs> like, and dude, that was, dude, you want to talk about a moment. They brought us both to the middle, too. That was some, so, yeah, think about all that. You bring the final two guys here. <laughs> it, it's like, <laughs> and then they're taking their time up there, too. So, <laughs> yeah, and when you hear, and, and when you <laughs> when I heard, and knew, <laughs> In my head, I'm thinking, all right, maybe this is a new way he's about to say I'm repeating. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. yeah, I guess people were saying it because it was so much, at some point, there was so much drama in men's physique, right? Everybody was like talking to each other on social media. I don't know. Man, it, you gotta think though, bro, like a lot of us guys, the culture of men's physique, you know, um, you know, we're all, shit, we're all like former athletes, former, so we're, we're competing. And, you know, us guys going at it for, for money, sponsorships, opportunity. And maybe it's the maybe it's the social media pressure that gets us to re reply when we shouldn't. <laughs> so it becomes to be, back in the day, Arnold and the main saying nothing because they ain't seeing each other until, <laughs> you know. So, so, yeah, you know, things, we're under the microscope a little bit. Think about the shit that we don't know about back in the day between competitors or bodies so you know we're under we're highlighted a little bit more that's all Absolutely. so i mean okay so so you beat him last year he beat you now you both champions mm -hmm. now i feel like next year is gonna be interesting oh uh, yeah that's the way the pattern goes come on b <laughs> follow suit bro <laughs> well tell me about your prep going into this uh olympia right and can you tell me what is your typical day like in training when you when you prepare for a competition like that so um, we use the uh I used to train. I, you know, I get up in the morning. Shit, I, I typically I, I go off how I'm feeling. I usually chew. I usually my eating. My eating's a little different than everybody else's too. Like I'm not getting up eating no bullshit chicken and rice and all that goofy shit. Like <laughs> you know, I get I get a little I get a little leeway with stuff. So to, to, when I'm until I'm about a man, maybe like a month out, when we're really pressing things down. We're really like you know being really. Uh, strenuous on the uh, macros and stuff I, my my thing is eating enough staying full you know so being tall you know bodybuilding just isn't a tall guy sport you know especially in men's physique you know i'm the i'm the tallest men's i'm the tallest olympia olympian ever i think that was uh that's crazy to think like the tallest olympian mr olympia ever <laughs> <laughs> so you know naturally i got longer limbs so i have to eat a lot man so i'm getting up and i'm you know my first my meals are pretty they're pretty heavy i'm eating bagels oatmeal <laughs> yeah and yeah we're grubbing bro we're eating hey, we're eating um and so i i, I kind of i like getting to the gym about the afternoon 
And uh, my training, typically I like to, I don't like to, I don't like, you know, I'm not the guy that gets in there lifting heavy weight. I like to kind of lift, I guess, like Jay Cutler and them boys did. And, uh, you know, the way Omar designs our our programs, he, he really designs them, you know, for our division. So, you know, it's, it's, it's always how much you max, you know, when you run into random people or <laughs> how much you squat. And it's like, bro, I tell them all the time. I tr- I just tr- I train and look good. <laughs> I, tra- I train for my division, you know. Um, usually train in the afternoon, and after that, I'm always I got I got free time, so I'm always, you know, I got the flexibility, so I tend to go see my family, you know, my daughter. Um, I got a lot of responsibility with my family and stuff too, so you know. With, with how much sleep do you usually get? Um, and how important is sleep, you think? Dude, I don't I don't not the traditional sleeper neither. <laughs> like I man, I've never been quite a sleeper, bro. And it's it it's been probably from commercial cleaning days. You know, I usually couldn't get into accounts until as early as midnight, as late as two AM. And then I'll have to go train. <laughs> so yeah, just I've never been quite a sleeper. But I think I, I, I like I get my sleep though, I get my naps. But it's crazy. I, I I can't sit here and preach like I get my eight hours of sleep a night. Your genetics are quite superior. Yeah, I, I mean, whatever. My coach is like, man, I can't figure you out. You're an alien. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, but I, 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 I'm definitely aware of everything. I don't push it to the limit where, my, where I burn myself. I'm very aware and conscious of, like, myself, my feeling, my energy. I'm very aware of that. So when I do need to lay my ass down or sit down and chill, I do it. Yeah, I'm. that's one thing, man. I my conscience and I'm very aware of, you know, just everything and how I'm feeling. That, that was huge. I, I've definitely learned that. You know, when you just pick up little injuries along the way through here, you realize like you gotta really be attentive, pay attention to how you're feeling and stuff. So that helps a lot too. What about cardio? You don't do that either? <laughs> I might have did like, I might have done like five cardio sessions this past. <laughs> Somebody was like, yo Ray, I don't remember your Instagram story. Did you do cardio at all? <laughs> But yo, that that again, that is, I was born for this, man. And so yeah, genetics. You know, like you say, you know, not to the the flaunt genetics in people's face and stuff. But there's some people that are just born for certain things. And like, yeah, I was that skinny guy. And and this was the and this is why I like I love this division. You know, guys want to see me make the transition to classic physique because I've you know, you know, I found a way to put to put it together at this height with these long limbs and stuff. But man, I, this division is—it's perfect for me right now, you know. And that's where the focus is. That's where it's going to be until, until they kick me out of it. Say, yo, get your ass out of there, Ray. <laughs> you're not moving up. You're not moving to nowhere. You're staying in that. You're not. Yeah, come in. You got to think. It, it doesn't look like. I mean, my, I know in my uh, ceiling for improvement. You know, I, I want, and that's the thing too, man. After the Olympia, I had to consider this, all this stuff too. Like, I won the Olympia, and I still wasn't, didn't have a, you know, a complete physique at where, you know, to be fully dominant where I need to be, you know? So, you know, I knew, I felt like we improved from 19 and 20, like, a lot. And then when, you, you know, I didn't get the outcome, man, that shit got me fired up. I'm ready to, you know, keep going, you know? And so I still got more to go in this division before I think about going to another division, you know? Let me, we got to, we got to, you know, we got to, I got unfinished business here <laughs> a lot more. And again, you guys see, I got the, like I said, I, I didn't go. For, I, I, my first Olympia, I came in fourth. The next year, I came in second. Next year, I won. Next year, I came in second. So, you know, my trajectory hasn't been, like, downhill or anything to where it's it's, it's telling me to stop or go somewhere else. So. Absolutely. Uh, when you're in prep mode, right, and you're getting ready for Olympia, do you um, look at social media to see how the other guys are looking, how Brandon is looking, how you know, other competitors are looking, and the, the – do you ever observe and care about that? Um, I not to say I don't care. I got social media. I got Instagram. I'm one of just like those dudes. And I'm, I'd be lying to tell you I don't look at them. There's certain people I follow, certain people I don't. Um, yeah, I, 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 hell yeah, I chime in and see how they're looking. <laughs> it's like an open book test. <laughs> These dudes are full, full of shit. I'm calling all y'all out. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I open my page. I open my Instagram. I know one of them was on my screen. So yeah, I'm like, damn. <laughs> Yo, 
Let's turn it up this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, man, I ain't no hate in my blood, bro. Like, I give props where props do. You know, a lot of these guys, man, guys look great. You know, and uh, the top guys from the man, from you know, first call out, second call out, third call out, dudes are grinding, bro. You know. So, what advice? I mean, you know, if somebody was to come to you, right, and mm-hmm. say, you know, I want to, I want to be a bodybuilder, I want to be men's physique division. Let's just say, right. Yeah. Would you honestly let them know to assess your body and, and see if you actually made for this, right? Because a lot of guys, you know, I guess they get upset when they, when, you know, you know, on social media, like people say, you, you know, look like shit, don't do it. And it's like, yeah. maybe it motivates them to do better. But do you think it's actually, to be honest, is a good idea? Like, if you look at somebody and you say you'll never be a bodybuilder in your life, just stop. Like, would you, <laughs> like, what advice would you give to somebody that comes to you with that? You know? Bro, I've, I've had friends that I had to tell them, like, hell no. Like, you know, we ain't doing a men's physique, bro. Like, no. Like and, and 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 you know what, you know and that's a that's a uh, a thing that goes with our division that we, it's obtain it's attainable, it's attainable not to everybody and you and and you know, you, sometimes you know you you gotta learn you learn you know the moment like you 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 put all the effort into it unfortunately it's, it may not be for you, on various on many different ways, um, but man how can you know I, I'm not a dream killer though bro. Like, you know, if you if there's people that are set into competing and and that's what they want to do um, after, you know, if you come to me, I'm going to give I'm going to keep it real with you. So I'm going to definitely assess you. And I'm not. That's why I like when I coach, I give I, it's a very selective number because, you know, you, you, these guys, people are putting their, their trust in you and their, and their faith in you. So you definitely owe them some honesty. Right. Um, it, but. So from there, that's where, you know, the, the person, <laughs> they, they take the decision if they want to keep going or not. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not much. I'm not a dream killer, man. Like, I'm going to give it to you real. But but I'm going to I'm gonna be, if, if I'm working, if you're my homie and I'm working with you and I see it's affecting you and this and that and it's only making things worse, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. That's how we assess it, you know. But, dude, it, it's, it, who am I to say that what you're doing isn't really giving you happiness because it isn't giving you the results that make me happy or the next man happy, you know? What I do, though, I know what I do it for, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm careful and I really understand that. I know what I do it for. I ain't doing it for no fucking third call-outs and, and the participation <laughs> participation uh, medal. I, you know what I mean? That's just not my... I ain't doing it for that, bro. Um, so, you know? But, like I said, uh, if someone love what they... If someone's got something that they want to try and do and... You know, they understand everything. Yeah. Who am I to stop them from it? Right, right, right. Um, now, what about stress? Do you ever get stressed out, and how do you deal with it? Because I know stress <laughs> can can pretty much sometimes kill your game. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Even on a day of the competition, how do you manage stress? Yo, the day of, I'm, not, I'm not usually stressed the day of the competition. <laughs> I'm not going to stress on a regular day basis, though. <laughs> you got to ask those around me how I deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, various various ways and methods, man. But um, <laughs> oh man, let's say I got. Do you get do you get stressed a lot, or or you seem like a happy guy? Man, I don't know if I get stressed a lot, but I just I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like we all have our 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 responsibilities and you know things, obligations and stuff. That just either we're, we're focused on to a certain extent, more or less than other things. You know what I mean. So I think that's more of I just get super focused in wanting to complete things or wanting to you know help this person out and stuff. So I mean, I guess naturally it could cause stress, but I, I don't really. I, I think everything that I that I really got in my life and I got the, that I, and the things that I do have as responsibilities are none of them's force. So. You know, I have my stress days, just like typically anybody else. But no, they're definitely not welcomed around here, bro. I tell people when it's time for prep, though, the cortisol levels have to be contained. So that's why I say I, I figure I, I wouldn't say that you know it's 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 over it's like overly stressed stuff. It's it's normal stuff, you know. It's life. That's all. But shit, I've been through a lot, bro. So <laughs> it's a lot that really it's a lot that that's going to take to really like stress me out. So, but when they do, you know. So, I had your, your story is amazing. Just the whole, you know, progression of kind of like you know, mm-hmm. so hit, hitting, hitting the, you know, the bottom and then bouncing back. Bottom. 
<laughs> the bottom bottom, bro. <laughs> like I like we could we it's, we could easily not even be here right now having this conversation. Could have been behind a prison glass or something like that, yo. It's gonna follow up on a story like that. Who knows? But man, yeah, man, that's why yo, I yo, I'm, I take it all. And man, that's why I'm thankful for it all, man. You know, like I've been through it, bro. I've been through the ups and downs for real. So like winning the Olympia, you know, coming to second place, dude, that's just, it's all a part of the, the, the journey, yo, the marathon, you know, it continues, you know, you just got to keep going. Definitely. So going to the next year's Olympia, right? Obviously, Brandon is going to want it again. You know, he's a hard worker. You know, yes. you know he's a highly motivated guy, obviously. He wants to maintain his title. Um, you know, what are you going to do? As far as uh, are you gonna change anything up from this year? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! <laughs> Damn right. The feedback that I get, you know, um, yeah, we're gonna put that shit to, to 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 work, and we coming for it, B. Like you know, everybody else, because it ain't just Brandon. You know, like there's guys, you know, that that are there, but for sure, I'm coming for it. I'm coming to get it back, and I'm gonna put the work in it for sure. And uh, you know, we gotta. I feel like uh, with the Olympia and everything happening so late in the year, that it's it's a short it's a short calendar for the Olympia this year, you know. And I'm like, usually after the Olympia, there's months of like just downtimes and the holidays come and stuff. But it happened right at the end of the year to where there, there's not gonna be, there's not much downtime. I think people are getting ready for you know the, the season that's about to start up. So uh, I feel like. <laughs> The way that it, it, the way that the timing of it, everything is, it's, you know, it's, it's got me. It, it, there's no, there wasn't no time after to where I was like, oh man, boo hoo hoo. It was just like I had to go back to work. It's 2021, bro. Olympia's coming up soon again. <laughs> but yeah, we got the Pittsburgh Pro coming up here in May. You're gonna do it. You're gonna compete. Yeah, we're gonna do that one. I won that three years in a row. I was gonna do it last year, but we uh, it got canceled because of COVID. So I'm gonna do it here, hometown. It ain't no up show. Do you want to win Arnold Classic? Do you want to do that show? I'm sorry? Do you want to do an Arnold Classic? I think the Arnold, they said, we got postponed until, is it June or something? I heard something like that, yeah. In June. Not quite sure. Because I got to find out when the Olympia is going to be. You know, Athletico might be going on this year. And yeah, we got a lot of things going on. I'm about to open the gym up here in Pittsburgh, too. Craig mentioned that to me, man. That's, that's great. Yep, it's YAMS Worldwide Performance Complex. So YAMS the acronym. It stands for Your Ambition Manifests Success. I love that, man. That's that's a that's a cool slogan, man. Yeah, man. So and uh, you know, like you know, fitness coming from where I'm from, you know, fitness lifting weights and stuff isn't like a thing. But I want to I want to now be able to you know give give guys that were in my shoes younger. You know, even if it's not the the route that I take. You, know, you might be able to catch something that's contagious from me, my interaction. Or even if you're an athlete, you know, I'm going to be able to help you out now because I didn't know how strength and strength training helped you back in the day. Or even, you know, just bringing a flavor to Pittsburgh with the fitness industry that that we we that we needed here. You know? So use my platform and everything, and we're, gonna, we're having it here. We're actually in the works of it. We're going to ha- hopefully have it open by the Pittsburgh Pro May, so when everyone's in town. On, uh, on gyms right now or everything's open right now everything just open back up again so, yeah were you concerned of, of getting COVID at all um during your prep or going oh. to olympia were you were you, were you healthy you know oh yeah <laughs> that shit, it exists man like you know whatever your thoughts are on it you know it actually exists and the, the last and it was definitely the last few weeks leading up for the show that's when it was you know when you, people were like Ray, make sure you're extra careful, extra careful. And I would do, I even, at the Olympia, I didn't go to the Meet the Olympians because I didn't, just the interaction, you know, like I was with my family, you know, my daughter, and man, it killed me because I love, I love the support, man. You know, I, you, I talk to anybody, like, I'm, you ain't never going to get me shitting on nobody. Fans, random, I like supporters, dude. Um, without them, you know, we ain't got none of this stuff. But, you know, I put out a I put out a statement for sure. Let them know because <laughs> last thing I want to do, I'm like, damn, I, I can't. Mr. Olympia can't show up to beat the Olympians. <laughs> but I put it out there, and everybody understood. They understood. So, but that yeah, I definitely was concerned, man. You know, just I, I didn't want to. You know, everything we work for, and then 24 hours, 40 hours before the show, I'm not feeling well. 
Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, the men's, the men's physique division is so huge, right? Sometimes on the, on the stage, there's like so many guys. Yeah. And it seems like everybody's pushing each other with the elbows constantly, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you deal with that and still want to hit the pose with, like, this guy hitting you, you know what I mean? You got to go balance. How do you deal with that? You got to be seasoned, boy. You got to know them tricks. <laughs> what are the tricks? That, what, what advice would you give to somebody that wants to, like, you know? You got to, you, you don't cause disruption. There's, you got to, you got to be... Notice who's what's around you. If you're on the end, you know you can just step to the side. You know, if you're if you're in there, you, yeah, think. Last thing I want to do is cause me distraction, and I don't want you affecting my shot. So if I'm in a back shot, I might just take a step back. Just take a step back. You know, um, I'm not into the bumping stuff because <laughs> it's just it's just I'm not I'm not I can't get into my shot. <laughs> but I just gave out a gym right here on Generation Iron. Hey, you owe me for this one. <laughs> Every men's physique competitor in the world now is gonna do it. <laughs> Seems like there's always a lot of pushing going on. It's constantly. Yeah, it might not be now. <laughs> we might we might have stopped that. <laughs> yeah, just take a step back, fellas. Just just just, just chill out. Move to the side. They're, they're gonna because they're gonna read. They're gonna put you back together anyway. So yeah, true. Big, big. I want to ask you two more things. Uh, did did you um? How do you feel about the men's uh, open Olympia? Results. Um, I don't know if you saw the show or not, but how did you feel about the, the, the standings and the placings? Big Rami brought it, bro. <sighs> man, dude, the open dudes, man, those are the G's, bro. Like, <laughs> there's so many of those dudes. Like, like all those top dudes. You know, those. That's 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 that's, that's what that's the that's the big dogs. You know, they're shit. I'm. I'm cool. With, I'm cool with a lot of those dudes too. A lot of them. Um, the, as far as the standings, though, shit. Brandon looked great. He brought it too, man. He brought it. He definitely brought it. Um, but man, Big Rami. I mean, he he. I think he finally nailed it, man. Like he brought. You know, he wasn't just overly big. He brought the conditioning. He looked like a, he looked great. Like he looked great, phenomenal to me. Um, Phil, I didn't really. I don't know. Phil, Phil, Phil's fuck. Phil looked great too. And there was a lot of people that was thinking Phil and Hottie could have swapped. But like you know how it is, man. The top, this dude's shit. But I, th I think they got it right with Big Rami. <laughs> they definitely got it right with Big Rami, man. I love Brandon's a beast, man. I, I love his character and everything. But Big Rami, I think it was like we finally brought what everybody would like thought he could, or was expecting or hoping he could bring. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's uh, 290. <laughs> that's incredible, right? The size. That's, not... that's crazy. Uh, and he's also tall, actually. You're talking about yeah. being tall, right? He's he yeah. definitely is tall. He he looked taller mm. than everybody else. He is. Yeah. On that stage, mm -hmm. Maybe he, I think he was the tallest, right, on, on the men's open. I think. I think so. Yeah, he brought that man. Yeah. Uh, back to you being tall. I mean, technically speaking, right? If you, I mean, 100 percent or whatever, like. You sh you can be unbeatable. You can be a very dominant champion for a very long time. I mean, because the the height. You know, I was going to talk to my classic physique. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chris Bumstead got it two times in a row now. Yeah, he did, man. I talked to Steve about that, and, and I'm like, you know, the, this his height play play a role in it. He said he he told he tells me he doesn't, but I still feel like the look, it's aesthetic look, with tall. You know what I mean? With a, with a yeah. large frame. I, I get that a lot from people. You know, they say that about me. He's like, yo, you just you stand out. I mean, just because because. I was, I'm either going to stand out in a good way or or just not in the way that I'm, you know, competitive enough to win. And he's either, either going to be not full enough or it's like, God damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he nailed it. He nailed it. Because I am so so much taller than those guys. So, I mean, I, I think it, does, it definitely helps at least capture the eye for sure. Whether it comes down to the decision or not, nah. Because, you know, they would have went with me again, I think, <laughs> if it was. So, <laughs> but it definitely helps. It definitely, it definitely helps. I believe for sure. Like I said, but I gotta bring it though, because if not, I'm like, get your tall ass out of here today, you know. <laughs> so it definitely helps. I think for me at least. Absolutely, man. Well, listen, it was great talking to you, man. I wanna wish you obviously congratulations on this at Olympia. You know, you got second place, mm -hmm. but you look phenomenal. Obviously, you know. Um, Appreciate it, brother. Mean, and mm -hmm. uh, good luck on opening your gym. I hope it's successful. Definitely keep you.
post it. Yeah, come down here. Do some shoot down here. Absolutely, man. It's great to you know, finally talk to you. Like, you know, we haven't really, you know, sat down and talk, but I wish we could do it in person too soon, man. Heck yeah, man. I'm, I'm up for it. You already know. <laughs> Thank you so much, bro. Great talking to me. You too, brother. Take it easy. Happy New Year again, man.